Hi everyone, this is Karina Gantis uh, with Narrations by KK. I'm reading a small excerpt from my own book, The Quest, which is book two of the duology, Illusion of Reality. It can be read as a standalone, but I do hope that you go out and uh, read the first book anyway. This is a chapter called The Bus Stack. Two rants held Thaya's arms in a tight grip. They escorted her out of the castle into a small building adjacent. There was hay on the floor and barrels stacked. It looked like some sort of wine cellar, but this was new mag, and she doubted it was the kind of wine she knew in the bottles laying on the wooden racks. Dust fell as one of the rants pulled a chain from the middle of the floor and opened a door revealing a set of grimy stairs that led into a dimly lit underground. Flickers of light told Thaya that they were flame torches at the bottom of the steps and thankfully not darkness. After reaching the bottom of the step, a sandy tunnel lay before them, barely wide enough to fit through. The worm tunnels twisted and turned and although she tried to memorise the way, it wasn't long before she confused her left to her right. The ranks, however, knew exactly where they were going and didn't pause once. They took her further, deeper and deeper. She wondered how far underground they'd travelled and how the hell she was going to find a way out. Eventually, they came to another set of stairs. These were made from stone and began a rather descent. After a while, the stairs turned sharply to the right. Thaya stopped walking. Her mouth opened as she gasped. They were in a huge cavern and torch-lit walls seemed endless. The ground that couldn't be seen Thaya wondered if they would ever reach their destination, for it seemed as though they'd been walking for hours. The stone steps were slippery with water, and she had a difficult time preventing herself from slipping. There were no walls on either side of the stairs, and no banisters. Twice she had to grab hold of a rank to keep her balance. She continued following them until they stopped so suddenly she bumped into the leading guard. Thaya gasped at the sight before her. It was as though she was in the middle of nowhere, stranded on stairs, suspended by nothing. The rants pushed her down onto the next step, seemingly refusing to go any further. The leading guard motioned for her to continue. Taking a tentative step, she turned to see the rants walking back up the stairs. Thaya sat down on the cold, wet step and put her head in her hands. How the hell has she got into this mess? And what was she supposed to do now? Was she supposed to wait there until the rants returned or starve to death? The only other choice was to continue her descent, but she had no idea what waited below. Too tired and anxious to think about it, she decided that for the time being, she would stay where she was and rest her head on her arms. Time held no relevance. Not that she cared how long she sat there. Eventually, though, she got up and continued downwards. The torches continued to give off a yellow light, but the ones in front seemed to dim with every downward step she took. The darkness crept closer. Further down she went until only one step was left alight. Fire stopped walking. The final step might be her last. There was something waiting for her, something vile and evil. The rot of decaying flesh assaulted her nostrils and went down her throat, making her gag. She could turn and run, but to where and to what future? Putting her right foot forward, she stepped into the darkness. Her foot landed on solid ground, and at the exact moment, torches around the chamber flared with light. Her eyes closed from the sudden brightness, and slowly she opened them again. Her eyes adjusted and she listened for any movement, knowing that she was not alone. Apart from the dripping water, there was no sound and not one could be seen. I sense your presence, Bustak. Come forth. No sooner had she spoken, a vision appeared. A huge floating mass of jellied flesh bobbled in front of her. There was no head or body. It was only a facial feature with a blinking eye in the centre and a red beam emitted from its ruby red iris landing at her chest. Was this the Bastak, the creature she feared? Appearances can be deceiving, Queen Thaya. 
no, no mouth opened, yet the bus deck's voice was stern and demanding. It is inevitable this encounter would occur, and I have remained for some duration to cite you. Do you not know why you are in my presence? I have been detained against my will, and I am sure you are aware. I have been enlightened to the fact that I am to be a sacrifice to you. A sacrifice? His laugh quivered, as did the jellied flesh. Nay, Thyre, tis not the concept. King Theon realised your true potential and dispatched you to me, and he will be gratefully rewarded. It's not a sacrifice. And what do you desire from me? The Bustat remained silent for some while before speaking again. Do you not sense a spirit? Her stomach dropped. What spirit? Have you not questioned where your strength and power originates from? You are unique, Sire, and yet unaware. I will not harm you. However, you will remain among your fellow guessels for eternity. To learn that she wasn't about to die should have meant something to her, but the Vestag's statement unnerved her. Who or what were the guessels, and how could she live forever? She wasn't immortal. If I possess a spirit, a strength and power, unlike another, why do you presume you can detain me? The Bustak laughed, echoed through the chamber. I deem tis duration for you to discover who you are. Permit me to introduce to you your kindred. And I shall leave it there. Go over to Amazon now or books2read.com and get yourself a Kindle copy or um, a paperback copy of the quest. Thanks for watching.